And now, please help me welcome your first female champion of the evening. Fighting out of the black corner, she represents the Netherlands. Please help me welcome Megan D. Clark. And now, bring out her opponent to the ring, fighting out of the goal corner, representing Mexico, it's Guadalupe Solis Acosta! As we know, beat the Clara in those World Championships and lost in the quarterfinals in New Delhi to Fatima Ben Masahel of France. Ladies and gentlemen, and we're underway in the beautiful city of Phuket, Thailand with your IBA Championship Night. This opening bout of the evening is officially scheduled for five two-minute rounds in a female light welterweight 63 kg matchup. Your five players will be representing us tonight ringside from the Kingdom of Jordan, Algeria, Kyrgyzstan, Korea, and finally Uzbekistan. And when the action begins, your referee charge the action of the man by the bell in the center of the ring, representing the IBA by way of, uh, by way of Turkey, with referee Yasser Sinar. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome, as we reintroduce first, fighting out of the black corner, she stands 62.2, uh, she weighs in officially at 62.2 kgs, standing at a height of 168 centimeters tall. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Dominant Hayden, Fechter out, Bent House in Netherlands, Megan D. Clark. And now, introduce her opponent, fighting out of the goal corner. Tonight she enters the ring standing at a height of 170 centimeters tall, winging it officially at 62.7 kgs. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Tabas y Caballeros, Bienvenida, Sectaca de Mexico, Guadalupe, Solis, Acosta. Ladies and gentlemen, our fighters are ready, our judges are ready. Referee Yasser Sinar will now be giving his final instructions to the boxers. Okay, ladies, keep your head up, keep your punches up, no holding, listen to me, okay? Shake hands. Round of 16, she's in the white, Declare in the black. Just looking for that right hand early on there, Declare. Little bit clumsy with it. She's taken the centre of the ring, but a kind of right hand lead got through there from Solis, and she's made an aggressive start here, Declare. Had a little bit of a walk around in the ring earlier on, and I can tell you there's very little underlay under that canvas. So this is this is a really sprung, quick surface. Could be a few blisters for these fighters tomorrow, depending on how they go about things. But if you're a mover, then this is the ring for you. It really is because you can skate across this, and it's fast. Just cocked that right hand there, Solis. Didn't let it go. Declared trying to get in and out with the feet. Right hand, longish right hand. Got through.
good energy to her so far, Declare. Then just dipped her knees and went with the left to the body. She could do with just settling down slightly, I think. Nice left hand there from Declare, who's having the better of this opening round. Just short with the jab there, Solis. She hasn't really committed yet. For the two, it's been Declare, really, who's been making the move. She has got caught a couple of times coming forward, as she did there, but I fancy she's going to get this opening round. Left hand got through from Declare. She's throwing in combinations, and maybe only one of the three, four, or even five she throws gets through, but she certainly outworked Solis in that round, and I would say outlanded her as well. There's that right hand, and that's quite typical of what we saw throughout that round. At times, she closed down her own space a bit too much, Declare, but she's getting on top of Solis. But she's got to do more with that lead hand herself, and you see Declare just timed that jab there, came straight over the top of it with the right hand. Solis has got to sharpen up a bit. I think she's been caught a little bit cold, a little bit flat. She's got the high advantage and the reach that comes with it, most importantly, so... She's got to try and use that against an opponent who doesn't move her head all that much on the way in. Solis has got to start trying to snap that jab and just keep her off. So it's the second. Solis of Mexico in the white. Declare of Netherlands in the black. And Solis got caught, but she did manage to clip Declare as she came forward. She's got to be more aggressive and the signs that she will be the Mexican at the start of round two. Maybe be a bit more proactive, not just wait for Declare to throw. Right hand there from Solis on the manoeuvre. On the move off to her right hand side, but then just got caught with a couple of body shots and just throwing singles to try and keep Declare off or isn't really going to work. That was better from Solis. But again, Declare is just swarming all over her here. Just getting close enough and then just letting her hands go and there's nothing to really stop her doing it. Solis, if Declare closes in like she is here, she's got to throw something. Declare, let's go with that right hand. She's just letting her lead off here, Solis. Backed up to the corner, ditches that right hand in. Bit of blood coming from the end of the nose, I think, maybe there of Solis. She's got to try and get that jab working. And there's a left hand that just knocked the head back of Declare. The head's almost clashing on the inside. She does come in quite square, the Dutch fighter. Yep, yeah, and the referee's going to have that blood checked out by the ringside doctor maybe a punch maybe a clash of heads hard to say but she's getting worked over a bit here Solis by her younger opponent who's very much out for revenge after being knocked out of the world championships by her back in March it was I think the women's world championships the men's in Tashkent the first two weeks of May and again declared just getting after her Solis trying to set her feet but gets caught with the right hand. Good footwork there from Solis, just moving around that front foot. But that's another round for Declare. Good straight right hand there from Declare. 
And she's having this her own way so far. The Birch Fighter, it's a good strong showing. So it's the third. The referee calling timeout. Something's made its way onto the ring canvas here. I'm not absolutely sure what that is actually, but never mind. So at least they're just hesitant. As she's throwing that jab, as she moves off to her left hand side, sinks back and throws a right hand there and catches to Claire as she comes forward. Again, just kind of prods with that lead hand. She's quite a reactive fighter, Celise. She's waiting for an opponent to make a move, and when you've got someone aggressive like De Claire, that's fine, but you've got to be able to give yourself that space and really time her on the way in. Good left hand there from. Right hand, rather, from Solis. Did catch De Claire as she was coming in. Just signs maybe that De Claire's slowing slightly as we head towards the midway stage of this third round so very nearly halfway through the contest it is very very hot in this venue as well as I've mentioned previously so he's looking for that right hand dips off to a left a bit and throws that right hand over the top Declare just in and out with those feet gets caught with a combination there as she came in didn't move that head and that's better from Solis Declare has got to try and keep moving that head on the way in and this is Solis' best round of the fight so far. The more eye-catching shots have probably come from her, so that could be enough to take it for her. The Claire again has been the aggressor. Little nod on the head there from Solis. So this one I don't think is by any means over. There's a good right hand from Solis. And then managed to slide away to her right hand side. Declared getting back with a right there, but there was a nifty combination. About 20 seconds before the end of the round that came from Solis. So into the third, the scheduled for five two-minute rounds. Back to the old WSB format, World Series Boxing, the much-beloved competition, team competition that ran for, I think, nine seasons it was in the end. I worked on loads of those fights and absolutely loved it, as did the boxers. Great experience, a longer format, smaller gloves, the razzmatazz around it. And I've been boxing the last two, three years has made great advances on that on that front it's kind of unrecognizable actually when you come to these events now than when I came to them five six seven eight years ago so Solis will be hoping that she got that last round on the judges cards is a, a chance that she could have but most of the work rate, as I said, did come from De Clare, so I wouldn't be surprised if she's 3-0 up, with the majority of the judges anyway. Again, De Clare just working hard on the inside there. These Champions Nights, individual affairs, rather than that team event. 
but it's good to see it back the longer duration. Slees again just throwing those shots as she's pulling her weight onto the back foot. And really she's just been outworked by Declare throughout the course of this fight so far. And that was certainly the case in that fourth round. And I've got Megan Declare with a substantial lead heading into the fifth and final round. Rounds one, two and four absolutely belong to her. Round three, slight question mark over it, but I might be being slightly generous to Solis there because it was her best round of the fight. It was certainly closer than the previous two, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she did enough to win it. So by my reckoning, she needs, well, probably a stoppage actually in this final round. So fifth and final round, Megan Declare, medalist at last year's World Youth Championship, she's in the black. And Altagracia Solis of Mexico in the white, and it was her who emerged victorious when these two met in New Delhi a few months back. But the signs are that it is Declare who is going to walk away with the win here I think worst case scenario she's 3-1 up three four rounds and again she's straight onto the front foot in this fifth and final round and Solis just hasn't really been able to live with the pace that she's set although she's trying to dig her toes in a bit more here this has been a really good performance from Declare just looks very very confident nice and composed and it's looked like the boss in there from the beginning and at 19 Operating at this kind of level, that is impressive. There are some some technical frailties there, you would say. She doesn't move ahead all that much on the way in. She can come in a little bit square, but she gets lots of punches off. A little faint with the front foot there. And she's always trying to keep that head on the move. She doesn't completely neglect the head movement, but she just does what quite a lot of fighters do, which is... She moves ahead when she's out of range, and then when she's moving in, the head movement stops. It's a very difficult thing to perfect. I mean, any fighter will tell you if you can gain that ability to slip punches as you're moving forward, then you really are in business because that way, every time you make somebody miss, you're then in a position to make them pay. So, final few seconds. It's been a good fight, though, good to watch. Salisa's dug in and just tried to find a way back into this one but by my reckoning there's no way back into it for it and I would say declare 5-0 maybe 4-1 in rounds there I don't think there's any doubt about that I don't see how you could have had it any closer than 4-1 to declare five scoring judges are inside using the 10 point must system as always She just kept the tempo up. It was in that third round, Declare, where maybe she just had a slight dip and Solis had her best round, but after that she picks it back up again. And those are extremely comfortable seats, I have to tell you. They're, they're not your standard seats you get in any kind of sporting arena. Padded seats and you can recline them as well. Just lean back, they've got a good bit of give in them.
That's Yasser Sina of Turkey, very experienced official. Gentlemen, your opening bout of the evening here at your IBA Champions Night in Phuket, Thailand comes to a close. I've given five two-minute rounds in a female 63 kg light welterweight boxing division. This bout was to crown the undisputed IBA Champions Night female fly, uh, light welterweight division champion. Before we go to the judges' scorecard, we'd like to kindly take a moment and invite a very special guest onto the stage for the awarding ceremony. Please put your hands together as bring forward the president of the Oceanic Boxing Confederation, Mr. Tawiti Mena. And now, for the official judges' scorecard. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to a close. I've completed five two-minute rounds in a championship female 63 kg light welterweight boxing division matchup. We go to the judges' scorecards where all your judges see it the same way. Ruling in favor of your winner by points. Declared by unanimous decision. To the black corner, Fechter out, Benzeros, Netherlands, Megan the Clown. It's at least it's a little bit taken aback there, but that's a clear, clear win. As I said, it's 5 0 or 4 1 at worst for the Clare, and that was a really good performance. High energy right from the beginning, just stamped her authority on it from the first bell. Never really let up, just that little lull, maybe mid fight, and that's the president of the deep. Oceanian Boxing Ladies Federation. Ladies and gentlemen, and now for the official awarding ceremony, we'd like to present the runner-up, the president of the Oceanic Boxing Confederation, Mr. So 5,000 US dollars Mena is presenting his awarding for the loser, 10,000 IBA for the winner, and that melts as well. 5,000 dollars for the runner-up, and your winner, an undisputed champion of the female 63 light welterweight division from Fechter House, Netherlands, Megan Declare. So Megan Declare, a fighter I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about in future. Medalist at the World Youth Championships. And has now avenged that defeat she suffered against Solis in the seniors back in New Delhi earlier in the year. 